Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Starting my winter and fall prep, getting things ready to go into the house. I'm about to do some pruning over here on my Phoenix Robolini Pygmy Date Palm. That's why you're here, right? That's why you clicked on the video, because it's about this palm tree. I've had a lot of questions about this palm tree over the years, and I thought I should go ahead, do a video, get those questions answered. I'll do a brief rundown here at the very beginning over just general care, because they're really a fairly sturdy palm, so don't need to talk too terribly much about how to grow these plants. It's fairly straightforward, yet, oddly, there's a lot of troubleshooting that goes with the plant that's fairly straightforward. Go figure. Phoenix Robolini, the pygmy date palm. These are a very common house plant. They come from southeast and parts of southwest Asia, areas in China and Laos, typically along riversides and really warm, humid areas. And you find them really common in flood zones. Knowing that, that means that they are a moisture lover. When we hear date palm, tend to think that the plant's going to be more drought tolerant, which these are fairly drought tolerant. Just because they like a lot of moisture doesn't mean they need that in the house. I'd consider them a palm that likes a moderate amount of water probably weekly watering let the top inch to two inches of soil dry out during the winter time maybe just the top inch during the spring summer and early fall they can go anywhere from part to full sun you can grow them in more shady locations but they tend to look really lanky they get kind of odd growth on them and sometimes their health tends to dwindle much more easily than it would if they were given more sunlight so i would aim for more light more light's better with this plant Generally, these only get about 6 to 10 feet tall. On rare occasions, they might get a little bit larger than that. Usually, they'll grow slowly to moderately fast up to about 6 feet tall, and then the growth tends to kind of slow somewhat from there. It's a really good idea to keep these well fertilized, especially during their growing season. They need a palm fertilizer that has a good amount of manganese and potassium in them because they're prone to deficiencies with both of those. They do like warmth and humidity, but you can also grow them in lower humidity environments. Their hardy zones 9B and up. I usually move mine back inside when temperatures start to dip into the lower 30s. When there's a chance of frost, I move them in, but I have left them out before into the upper 20s to mid 20s, and they did okay. A little bit of leaf damage, but they survived. Non-toxic to dogs and cats. They're safe to have around your pets, but they do have some really big vicious spines up towards the center of the crown, so it's kind of a dangerous plant to have around little kids if really anything. They're dangerous to have around. They can poke your eye out. Because of that, I usually suggest wearing protective glasses when moving this plant around. The pygmy date palms hold on to their foliage for a pretty long time. Their old foliage will start to brown, die off, hang closer to the trunk. They don't self-clean like other palms do. So it's a good idea to go ahead and remove those. Pests and things can end up clustering around inside all the dead limbs that hang down low. It's just easier to not have them there. It's not uncommon for the fronds to get some brown tips on them. It's a very fine frond, so it's easy for the moisture to get blown right out of those leaves. You can cut them off if you want to. I prefer to just leave them because when you cut them, you still end up with a brown line from where the scissors went through. So the issue doesn't go away just from pruning it off. You can see here, this one has a decent amount of yellowing, some browning on its lower foliage. I'm not concerned about that. It's just old leaves. They're starting to die off. This has been putting up lots of fresh fronds. So these are just last year's leaves starting to droop and fall. So I'm going to go ahead and get those cut off. If the yellowing is consistent and goes throughout the entire crown of the plant, you notice that it maybe looks spotted. That could be a sign of a deficiency, so it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to up the fertilizing just to help correct that problem. Maybe check the pH of your tap water. Sometimes hard water can cause these palms to not uptake nutrients as well as they need to in order to avoid having those deficiencies. So if you've been fertilizing it and doing everything right, but you're still having issues with the yellow spotting and those sorts of things, it could just be the tap water. Might have to make some adjustments there if that's the issue, if the water's too hard. Then of course, as with all houseplants, yellowing and browning can also be a symptom of over or underwatering. If the soil feels like it's consistently moist and staying that way for a long time, probably being overwatered and if you water it and it's drying out very quickly like within i'd say two to three days that soil's bone dry maybe four or five days then you might want to repot the plant into something that's going to hold on to the moisture for a little bit longer so while they do like a consistently moist soil they don't want to be in something soggy soggy soil will just cause all kinds of problems here so it is important that the mix drains well 
but it shouldn't dry too fast because then you just have to water the plant constantly. Very similar to most house plants in that regard, right? I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this old foliage because it's bugging me. I wanna get it off of there. I wanna have a nice clean crown up there. Better airflow is always better for reducing any chances of rot. The problem is I can't quite get to the plant. I have all these things in front of me. I'll just have to really stretch myself out here. This particular Robolini is one that I had my fair share of issues with in the past. It went through some rachis blight, which is a fungal problem. You can see there's still some signs of that on some of the older foliage. I'm not seeing any of it on the new leaves. Symptoms are these little spots that go up along the edges of those fronds. I did it with a copper-based fungicide. Did that oh, probably every three weeks for like six months. I've learned I prefer when I start to see those black spots if they're becoming rampant it really i've just been trying to just get them all off the tree even if it means reducing it down to not having a very big crown better to just get those fronds off okay it might look like i went a little bit overboard with the pruners i didn't it's okay it has a great big huge chunk of fronds coming out the middle that's getting ready to fall open and when that does the whole thing's gonna kind of come back down and it'll look totally fine as i mentioned this particular robolini is one that i've had my fair share of issues with i've grown others in the past that just grew and grew and grew and i didn't have to do much with them this one it had the uh, rachis blight that fungal infection you can see the crown on this one looks kind of funky how it's like big and then small that's because this one almost died to crown rot a few years ago i store my palm trees in a greenhouse during the winter time there's a service here they come in they take the plants and they bring them back in the springtime this one eventually just got too big to get into the house so uh, i send it off and then they brought it back basically dead one year so that's why the crown that center looks all funky there it almost looks like there's a new palm tree emerging from an old one it's because that lower section right below where it's green is where it had started to die and everything above that's all new growth yeah i know i said they're easy to take care of and i'm rambling off all these problems but these are actually common problems i don't know how common the crown rot is with these avoid getting moisture into the center of the plant up there into the crown you can pretty easily avoid crown rot and avoiding excessive and extreme cold that'll help with that too as far as these trunks are concerned they're very fibrous over time they will start to reveal these fun little spikes that are on them this one has some of those as the plant ages you can usually just go in and remove these by hand and it'll start to reveal those fun little spikes on a more smooth trunk and just like most palm trees they can stay in the same pot for a very long time Time. When they get to a point where you're noticing you just have to water them constantly in order to keep them hydrated, that's usually a good sign that it's time to repot them. Bump them up a pot size. Can use an all purpose potting soil amended with a little bit of perlite or rock, whatever you like to do to increase drainage, add some bark chips in there, whatever works for you. The only thing I will suggest is that it does seem to help a lot to till in, to mix in some organic matter like a compost or something like that into that all purpose potting soil that's typically pretty void of nutrients. At least true potting soils are, because they're not really soils, they're a potting mix there's not normally much in them other than maybe some peat or coconut those are things that don't break down very quickly and they don't provide much for the plant and of course use a continuous release fertilizer but still you want to watch out for the manganese and potassium deficiencies so it's probably still a good idea to make sure that it gets a fertilizing i'd say every other week to once a month during the summer with a fertilizer made for palm trees now when you have them indoors or just really winter time the day lengths are shorter i'd cut back or completely stop fertilizing it's going to depend somewhat on your growing conditions if you're growing this in like an atrium or a sunroom and it's really warm and really bright and the plant really wants to keep growing then of course keep fertilizing it but if the conditions are more like a typical household i would cut back maybe go down to a quarter strength of the fertilizer just about once a month something like that that way it's still getting some of those nutrients that it needs to avoid having deficiencies but it's not quite enough fertilizer to make the plant want to grow even though the light isn't telling it to grow because that's how we end up with really lanky and weird looking plants usually when these are sold at the box stores at the big box stores they'll be in a smaller pot probably a 10 inch pot or so with a whole bunch of teeny tiny little plants coming out sometimes there'll be a couple big ones and lots of little ones well the robolini actually is a suckering palm meaning that they will send out little baby plants from the base typically at least in the u.s it's not that common to have them truly sucker but a lot of the ones that where their seed source is from laos they do tend to sucker on their own that doesn't really matter the entire point there is just that eventually over time those plants are going to grow and overcrowd each other so be prepared to have to thin some of those out usually having 
three to up to five in a pot is okay, but it's still kind of pushing things a little bit. You want to make sure that there's like, there's like a staircase situation. You want one tall one, one shorter, one shorter, one shorter. That way light's evenly distributed. They're still going to be fighting for nutrients. So it's really up to the person who's growing the plant to decide how many plants they want to keep in each pot. Pygmy date palms are considered slow to moderate growers. I would consider them to be a moderate to fast grower personally, but only up to a certain height. Usually when they're smaller, when you have one that has anywhere from like 18 inches, maybe two feet of trunk, you could probably get it to five to six feet tall within five to seven years. That's not too bad. I mean, I consider that to be a decent amount of growth. But the thing is, once they reach anywhere from like four and a half to six feet tall, the growth does slow considerably. Which is great, because if you're growing this in your house, you probably don't want it to be great big and huge and like sticking up in your ceiling right? As far as pests are concerned, the main issues I hear about with the Robolini palms is usually going to be hard scale and soft scale, occasionally mealybugs. In the home, uh, spider mites can be an issue just because the air tends to be more dry. If you can increase humidity and airflow, and that's a good way to help avoid having spider mite issues or hit them with a horticultural oil and that helps the most with spider mites oh and of course other typical houseplant things i forgot to mention like keeping a draft off the plant that's going to help keep the fronds from having those brown tips on them don't want cold drafts hot drafts really just no drafts you don't want air blowing directly on the plant around the plants great on it, eh, that can cause problems. If you, there's a drainage dish under the plant, it's a good idea to make sure that the plant is lifted above it so that it's not actually sitting in the water that settles into that drainage dish. They're prone to having issues with root rot, so it does help to make sure that they're lifted up above that water. And these will go ahead and put out an inflorescence, even in the house, as long as they're getting enough sunlight. It can be kind of fun to watch the pods come up and out from the crown. They look like, I don't really know how to describe what they look like. They're big, hard green ovals, they open up have some flowers on them. The seed will not be viable unless you have a male and a female. They're not self-fertile, but it's still kind of fun to look at. However, it can be quite messy. I've come to a point where I actually cut those pods off after they've been open for a while just because they drop seeds everywhere and it tends to attract rodents. I prefer to not have to deal with that. The main issues, ooh, the pool's steaming. Sorry, had an ADD moment. The main issues that usually come up with this plant is that the plant's just shriveling somewhat inexplicably. Usually that's related to light and water, so you have to evaluate how much light the plant's getting. They like full sun. The less light they're getting, the less water the plant should be getting. If it's in a lower light situation in the home, it's very possible that the plant's just being overwatered and then those leaves are starting to droop, they'll start to discolor and they start to kind of clamp up, lose that glossy green appearance to them. Try and give them more light, some more warmth, go ahead and dry them out. This can also happen because the plant's not getting enough water or maybe it needs to be repotted. And that's one of those things you kind of have to just go through the process of eliminations, knowing that the plant likes warmth, it likes a lot of light, it likes consistently moist soil, but that's not going to be good for the plant if it's in a cool environment where it's not getting enough light. And I have to use those factors to deduce what's going on there. But yep, I think that's going to do it. Got my Robolini all trimmed up here, ready to go off to storage into the greenhouse for the winter time. Fun plants. They're really common house plants. I know I just talked about all the things that can go wrong with them. Thing is, they're just really common. So it's common to have people who have issues with them because there's an abundance of them. Everybody's homes and growing conditions are different and different experiences with plants. And sometimes you may, you can just get a plant that just doesn't have good genes and doesn't grow well. Sometimes that happens. Right to moderate light, moderate amount of water, fertilize monthly during the growing season with an all-purpose palm fertilizer, keep it away from drafts, all those things. It's again, it just feels like fairly typical houseplant information, which means that it's usually a pretty sturdy plant. It's all the eccentricities that make the videos go a little bit longer, like having too many plants in one pot, whether or not to thin them out. And then things like overwatering, underwatering, crown rot, rachis blight, fungal issues. Comment down below, what are some of your experiences with the Robolini palms? Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. It's how we all learn and grow together. I think they're fun palms. I think they're beautiful to have in the home. I like having the Robolinis around, with the exception of them like potentially poking your eye out. Really, fantastic palm trees. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.